Since 2011, Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk's horror anthology series has taken a toll on every horror fan. American Horror Story premiered first in 2011, and it is not showing any signs of slowing down. There have been 11 seasons to date, with the 12th season being teased in 2023. While fans have varied opinions on which season was good and which season was not, there is one thing that fans have to agree upon through and through. The series has given us quite a few iconic villains, and with the star-studded cast of Jessica Lange, Angela Bassett, and Kathy Bates, why won't we? So let us take a deep dive into all the monsters, creatures, and entities this anthology series has given us over the past 11 seasons. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Troy? <laughs> Twisty the Clown Let's start off the list with Twisty the Clown. Twisty was predominantly featured in Freak Show and Cult. The clown that we know had a sad life. When he was a child, Twisty was dropped on his head. This led to some developmental issues in him and gave him a minor mental disability. He joined the Rusty Westchester's Traveling Carnival as a clown in 1943, leaving his alcoholic mother behind. He thought that his life in the carnival would be better, but sadly it was not. He was not liked by his peers because he was very popular with the kids, and so the carnival freaks who hated him decided to ruin his career. They spread a rumor that he was molesting children, which led to Twisty losing his popularity and the job. The crazed desperation pushed Twisty into attempting suicide. But the suicide attempt failed and he ended up blowing his lower jaw off to hide the grotesque disfigurement. Twisty started wearing a prosthetic mask with a wide grin that looked terrifying. With this, he decided that he would help the kids by saving them from their parents, who were mean to them. He's a kidnapper and a murderer, but he doesn't think he is doing anything wrong because Twisty genuinely believes the kids like him. The Rubber Man The Rubber Man, since his first appearance in the murder house, was definitely something that freaked out a lot of viewers. The Rubber Man is a man in a latex BDSM garb covering him from head to toe. The suit was first purchased by Chad when he found out that his husband Patrick was having affairs in online BDSM chat rooms. While the suit did not revive their dying marriage, the suit acted as a vessel using which Tate Langdon created the alter ego of Rubberman and did the horrendous acts that he did, such as assaulting Vivian and killing Patrick and Chad. Had I that child, she would have been flayed and roasted by now. The Butcher The Butcher shows up in the sixth season of American Horror Story, where we learn about her origins. Born as Thomason, she was married off to Jonathan White. While John was away, Thomason was in charge of the colonists there. Taking advantage of the absence of John, Mr. Cage, the leader of the rebellious insurgents, tried to move the colony inland. When Thomason refused, Mr. Cage and his lackeys, including her son Ambrose, put Thomason in a scold's bridle and left her in the forest to starve. There she sold her soul to Scathek, a witch, in exchange for a wild pig's heart. That gave her the strength to go back to the camp and kill off Mr. Cage and his lackeys. She spared Ambrose, but that did not go well for her because Ambrose did not like that his mother kept killing off children to sanctify the land. He formed a rebellion group against her, and for that betrayal, Scathic gave Thomason a detailed plan for retribution. Under the guise of a special communion, Thomason poisoned every man, woman, and child in the colony, stabbed her son, and let Scathic stab him, tying all of their souls to the land. Number 4. Infantada Murder House saw a lot of iconic horror characters, and one such character was the Infantada. In the series, he is referred to as Thaddeus, the child of Dr. Charles and Nora Montgomery. Dr. Charles was conducting illegal abortions in his basement, and one of his patients told her boyfriend, and the boyfriend was not very happy to hear that. So he kidnapped Thaddeus and sent his dismembered corpse back to Dr. Charles in jars. Shocked at the horrifying sight, Dr. Charles tried to put the child back together, attaching each of the pieces together and bringing him back to life with the heart of one of the aborted fetuses. Nora realized that the child was a monster when she got attacked by Thaddeus while nursing him. She tried to kill him, but realized she could not. 
so she killed her husband and herself, leaving Infanteta in the basement of Murder House, waiting to quench his bloodthirst. Tate was once attacked by Infanteta, and Nora rescued him, which led to the motherly relationship between them. Bloody Face In the Asylum storyline, psychiatrist Oliver Threadson is the kindest and most sane character. But that is until we get the big reveal that the kind doctor is the gruesome Bloody Face killer. Turns out, being abandoned as a child by his birth mother affected Threadson far more than he was willing to admit. He grew up in the orphanage he called The System and it was hard on him. He always sought a mother's touch, a mother's presence. This became more evident to him when he found himself wanting to embrace the first cadaver he worked on as his mother. That led to him looking for women who had the mother's skin. If he found any woman inadequate, he would skin them, behead them, and use their skin to add to his body face mask or make furniture. He kidnaps Lana as he finds her to be the one, and he is murdered by Lana, which is valid after the torment he put her through. When people die, they soil the sheets. The Addiction Demon In Hotel Cortez, we come across the pale demon of addiction. The Addiction Demon seems to be this slender man covered in a pale white skin like tarp from head to toe. It does not have an opening for the mouth or for the eyes. It is extremely sexually violent. It has a conical drill bit dildo strapped onto it, and we see it making its victims hallucinate while it assaults them with this torturous phallic object. This demon is said to have been manifested by the numerous drug addicts who come to the hotel to shoot up. One such junkie is Sally, and we see her almost use the demon to get Gabriel to tell her that he loves her. The day of reckoning is upon you! Skathak. Now, in case you didn't know, Lady Gaga was a part of American Horror Story, which makes sense actually, because no one could have played the role of Skathak this well. Now, who is she? Skathak was said to be an English woman who was a descendant of the Druids. She was trying to go to the English colonies during the 14th century, but her journey found her as a stowaway in a boat, plagued by death. After she was found at landfall, a superstitious group of soldiers decided to burn her alive at the stake as a witch, assuming she brought a curse upon them. While dying, she answered the calls of bloodthirsty gods and ended up with enough power to kill the crew and escape. We see her play a crucial role in the origin of Butcher, and honestly, she is never up to any good. Pale Men In the second episode of Double Feature, we come across the Pale Men. Who are they? Well, in the world of Double Feature, there is a pill called Muse. This is something that can get rid of the creative blocks that a writer, a painter, or musician might feel because it makes their occipital lobe function 1000x to 5000x times more. However, the pills deplete the minerals from the body of the consumer, such as magnesium, calcium, sodium, and potassium. The people who get addicted to this pill in Princeton end up filling their teeth down to razor-sharp fangs to make drinking the blood of humans and animals easy. The more the addiction grows, the more the people look chalky and pale, with dark lips making them look like cadavers. You're mine now. Body and soul. Satan. Would any horror series be complete without Satan being a part of it? In the case of American Horror Story, we see Satan take control of several characters as his vessel. When he is in the body of Jed Potter, he's much more disturbing, drinking the blood of animals and doing incantations. But right after Jed, he took a liking to Sister Mary Eunice. Using the sweet sister, Satan mocked fellow sister Jude and Dr. Arthur Arden. He then revealed himself to be Jude as time went on. But when Jude was no longer an option, he decided to grow close with Monsignor Timothy Howard, making him rise to the ranks to become a pope. Satan's ultimate plan was to take over a Catholic church, but this plan did not go through because Timothy pushed Eunice down the stairs. When Shakath gave Eunice the kiss of death, she took both her and Satan away, getting rid of the fallen angel for good. She got loose somehow. The Countess Lady Gaga returns to the hotel to take on the role of the fabulous and deadly Countess. Elizabeth Johnson was only 21 years old when she met the loves of her life, Rudolph and Natasha. But the love did not last long as Rudolph passed away suddenly and Natasha disappeared. 
When she attempted to kill herself, she was saved by James Patrick March, whom she married for the sake of money. She visited Rudolph's grave often, where she met Natasha, and learned that Rudolph was very much alive, just a vampire now, which is why he faked his death. When she met to meet with Rudolph, he turned her into a vampire too, in the hopes they could run away together. That did not happen because James caught Natasha and Rudolph and sealed them in the wall of the hotel, making Elizabeth think she was abandoned. That is how the reign of the Countess we know starts, with betrayal and a broken heart. Ball. Ball is a demonic entity we see in American Horror Story. He is said to be the one who brings pestilence, and he can increase the fertility in women. He has a demonic appearance with the classic red skin, horns and everything. We see him in Liv's story arc, where she finds details about him under the title of Sumerian Fertility God. But later, we learn that he is one of the seven princes of hell. Despite being the prince of hell, he is an honest individual, which might be surprising as he is a demon. We repeatedly see him do whatever he can to meet all the conditions of his contract and be released. Piggy Man One of the horrifying character designs is that of Piggy Man. On the body of a man, there is a mask of a pig's head. The lack of verbal communication from him makes him scarier than expected. And he is a menacing killer who shows up out of nowhere, slashing at whoever is in his path. He was made this way by Skathak, who scalped him and sent him to Butcher, who then sacrificed him to the old gods because he had stolen provisions from the colony storehouse. He was roasted to death like a pig after having a pig head put on him, a pig tail nailed to his tailbone and hogtied to a stick. Play with me. Play with me. Pepper our favorite microcephalic performer of Fraulein Elsa's Cabinet of Curiosities was first introduced in Asylum, and we saw her return in Freak Show. But what made Pepper the way she was? She was abandoned as a child, and she grew up as an outcast in the orphanage. Elsa Morris took pity on her condition and took her in. That's how she became a part of Fraulein Elsa's Cabinet of Curiosities. She had a strong maternal instinct towards Ma Petite, and who can forget her getting married to Salty? Pepper is very playful and childlike, even though she's accused of infanticide. When she came back from her abduction, her protective side kicked in, and we often see her protecting Grace from Dr. Arden, which really adds a layer to her character. Cool job. Papa Legba Papa Legba is one of the classic characters we get out of this horror anthology series. He's a shadowy loa, a Haitian voodoo spirit with an extremely menacing appearance. His face is covered in grey-white face paint, and his red eyes with the long dreadlocks can strike terror in any unsuspecting victim's heart. He is the gatekeeper of the spirit world, and he's simply focused on one thing, acquiring souls. He does not worry about where they're from, he simply wants them, and he's willing to go all out to get those souls. He specifically loves making deals with people who are in need of several life lessons, knowing very well they will not be able to keep up their end of the bargain so that he can torment them after their death. I am the monster you made me. Benjamin Richter as Mr. Jingles Benjamin Richter, better known by his hooded serial killer alias Mr. Jingles, was a Vietnam War veteran, but he was discharged dishonorably, which led him working as a janitor at Camp Redwood. While working there, he was falsely accused of the murder of nine camp counselors and his entire life was ruined. He was incarcerated and Margaret claimed to be the sole survivor of the whole ordeal. The murders were so gruesome that they were told as horror tales, and because of the jingling keychain on his belt, Benjamin got the moniker of Mr. Jingles. Even though he was not a serial killer when he was put away, after 14 years of torment, Benjamin truly lived up to the moniker. And when he escaped the asylum, Mr. Jingles wreaked havoc everywhere he went. Class now? I am going to call the police! 
Kai Anderson. Evan Peters came back to the show after his killer performance as Tate Langdon, aka the Rubber Man, to take on the role of Kai Anderson. While Anderson might look like your average boy, he's far from it. At first, he was just an internet troll hiding behind the screen, unaware of the hurt he could cause to people. But when he was radicalized by his own personal trauma, Anderson changed for the worse. He manipulated people's emotions, and with his charisma, he reeled in more and more followers, hoping to spread chaos wherever he went. He may not be a scary monster in the supernatural sense, but he is truly a monster because we never know how many Kai Andersons are walking among us. I guess I'm just going to have to kill God. James March Evan Peters was on a roll in American Horror Story, giving us another passionate portrayal of a character, this time a serial killer named James Patrick March. We have mentioned him previously as the husband of Elizabeth, aka the Countess, but he has his own story too. James built Hotel Cortez because he had a twisted hobby. Unlike most people, his hobby consisted of killing people, having sex with their dead bodies if he found them attractive enough and keeping proof of this horrendous act by concealing them in walls, hidden from eyes. Elizabeth particularly enjoyed hearing his victims call for help, which added to his depraved hobby. They truly were a couple made for one another. No one to blame but yourself. The Axeman The life of a musician is stressful, certainly. But who would have thought it would be stressful enough to take up killing as a coping mechanism? In the case of Axeman, this is exactly what happened. Axeman was a jazz musician who used to play saxophone. He promised to kill again after he published his confession in the local newspaper. He promised to provide amnesty to houses that play jazz. This definitely struck terror in the hearts of people because the Axeman had already done enough killing in 1919. However, before he could restart his kill streak, he was lured into Miss Robichaud's academy, where defined opera music was playing. Intending to kill whoever was responsible, Axeman entered, only to be killed by the witch Millie. But salvation was not something he got. His ghost remained confined to the school, though. <laughs> Delphine Lalori. Kathy Bates takes on the role of Delphine Lalori in the horror anthology series, and honestly, nobody could have played her better. Based on the very real Delphine Lalori, Kathy Bates plays the role of a socialite who loves throwing parties and torturing her slaves. Lalori was not very happy with the wandering eyes of her husband, so she made this beauty bomb for herself to keep her looking fresh. Instead of having AHA, BHA in this beauty bomb, she used the pancreases of her slaves truly making us wonder what is the price for true beauty for LaLaurie. However, her beautiful horrific reign ends when she tortures the wrong man. She tortures Bastion, whose lover happens to be the voodoo queen of New Orleans. The queen gives LaLaurie a love potion, but its effects are far dire than LaLaurie had expected, as we all know. <laughs> Big Daddy, the streets of New York, have been the exploration grounds for several people, sexuality aside. But the gay people were in danger when Big Daddy was out on his prowl, dressed in the typical leather garb of S&M that was common for the gays. Big Daddy was anything other than your friendly dom. Even though he towered over most of his victims and his tanned body might make the young gays assume he was interested in them, Big Daddy is just the personification of a deadly virus going through the city. He kills his victims after stalking them, and his preferred victims are young gays who are affected by the virus. So what was wrong with him? He had another face on the back of his head. Hideous as a devil. Edward Mordrake Born with a second face, Edward Mordrake was a nobleman. He was posh, handsome, talented, everything you could want in a man, really. But the second face that he had was almost like a dark entity that eventually drove him insane. He was kept in the Bedlam Asylum, where he was not happy. When he had the chance, he escaped the asylum and decided to join the freak show troupe, where he felt more like himself. He fit in well, and he was happy. Until on Halloween Eve, the second face took control of him and made him kill his entire coterie. After that, he became somewhat of an urban legend amongst the carnies. Any performance, no matter how minor, risked inviting Mordrake. And that is not something they want, as he wants one of the carnies' life. He revealed to me his name, F.W. Morneau, the great German director. 
Afflicted While afflicted sounds rather scary, in the universe of American Horror Story, it refers to vampires. In this universe, the vampires are people who are affected by a virus. This virus grants them youth and beauty, but also comes with the con of a full blood diet, preferably from humans. Unlike typical vampires, where a bite spreads the infection, drinking the blood of the host or a transfusion from the host is what turns you into one of the afflicted. It was first brought back from Europe by F. W. Morno, and then he spread it to Rudolf Valentino, who in turn spread it to Elizabeth, aka the Countess. Shelly In Asylum, we get to see a lot of characters, but none of them are as troublesome as Shelly. She is a patient in Briarcliff Manor, and she is a nymphomaniac. Since her childhood, her urge to satisfy herself has caused a lot of issues. Her mother forced her to wear mittens to stop Shelly from giving in to these urges. She had a troubled adolescence, and when she met a bass player, she thought she would be happy with him and got married. But the marriage did not last long because she soon caught her husband cheating on her. When she retaliated by cheating on him, he reported her nymphomania, and that's how she became a patient. Dr. Arden loathed her and considered her a hooker, but later, when he tried to rape her, she she laughed at his size, which led to him amputating her legs. She finally died at the hands of Monsignor Howard, who choked her with a rosary. But you, you undoubtedly be one of those soulless minds. Elsa Mars when we meet Elsa, played by the amazing Jessica Lange, she comes off as cold, greedy, and extremely calculative, which makes her a villain for some characters. But as we get to unravel more about her past, you can almost sympathize with her. Elsa is a German expatriate with a very dark past. She wanted to be a star, but she used to be a prostitute and had made a fair share of pornographic films in her days. She thought her freak show would catapult her into stardom, and it sure did for a while until TV came into the lives of the general public. Elsa did get the chance to be famous with her groundbreaking album, but everything falls apart when her past life comes back to haunt her. However, despite everything, her character ends up happy in death with her family, the freaks to whom she was very much similar in ways she never expressed. <laughs> The Minotaur Bastion was a slave in the Lalori house, working for Delphine Lalori. His lover was Marie Lavu, the queen of voodoo in New Orleans. They were together for a long time, and they were about to start a family together when things took a turn for the South. At a ball, Pauline, Delphine's daughter, seduces Bastion and forces herself on top of him. When her father catches them and breaks the news to his wife, they decide to spin the story the other way around and blame Bastion instead. He was beaten up and restrained in the attic with a hollowed-out bull's head on top of him, making him look and sound like the Minotaur. Marie, struck with grief, gives up their baby to Baba Legba in exchange for immortality, which she shares with Bastion, who has turned into an actual Minotaur. Minotaur tries to kill Delphine while she is in Miss Robichaud's academy, but he is beheaded by the Salem witches, marking the end of the truce between Marie and the witches. We assume he dies for real when Marie dies in the series. Margaret Booth Margaret met Benjamin while they worked together in Camp Redwood. However, they were often harassed by other counselors in the camp. So in a moment of rage, Margaret killed all of them and framed Benjamin for it. Margaret is a devout Christian, and she looked at this incident as something that triggered her rebirth. She uses her religious beliefs as an excuse for the horrible things she has done, and she even opens Camp Redwood again just to finish what she had started. For us. The Pharaoh Ferals are one of the creatures of the American Horror Story universe. They are humanoid, cannibalistic creatures that dwell in the national park. They have been there for a while now, and the government knew about it. The only way to prevent the feral from migrating was to give them a continuous food source, which they got by eating tourists and park rangers. As Jay's son becomes a feral himself, after being kidnapped by them, we can conclude that these creatures were once humans, who have now taken on this horrific, demon-esque form. Water Zombies When Maynard Boone and his family banded together against the building of the Lake Prescott Dam, the developer of the area, Ray Prescott, decided to kidnap them, shackle them up, and launch the dam. The lake bed was formed on top of the three men. This led to the spirits of Boone and his cohorts not reaching salvation, and they stayed back 
trying to get back at Prescott for murdering them. When Jeffrey shows up to take his wife and daughter home, he's attacked by the water zombies. As luck would have it, Jake, his son, died because Jeffrey was a descendant of Prescott while they were on the lake. The zombies make it clear that his wife and daughter are not their target and end up ganging up on the last male descendant of Raid Prescott. Sister Mary Eunice At first glance, Mary Eunice is a sweet woman. She's pretty with her blue eyes and her shy demeanor really suits her. When she was young, a skinny dipping prank went wrong and that led her to vow her pledge to God. The sweet girl, however, takes a horrific turn when Jed Potter dies and Satan, in search of his new vessel, chooses the unsuspecting sister as his next. She goes from shy, meek, and demure to evil, cunning, conniving, and extremely bloodthirsty. She gets much joy from killing off her inmates, which is something that is truly horrific to see. Why do you hate me so much? Because the wrong son died that day! It should have been you! Lavinia Richter Benjamin did not get the murderous traits from his veteran past. It was from his mother, Lavinia. Lavinia was a widow who came to work at Cam Goldstar with two of her boys, Bobby and Benjamin. When Bobby died in an accident out of negligence on the lifeguard's part, who was busy being intimate with the camp counselor, Lavinia lost her mind. She swore vengeance and murdered them in cold blood. When her son Benjamin saw her, she tried to kill him too, and Benjamin had to kill her in self-defense. Her blood tainted the campground, and later, when Camp Redwood was formed in the same place, she was seen haunting the campgrounds as Lady in the White. This is going to hurt. Arthur Arden Arthur Arden was born Hans Gruber and grew up to be a Nazi doctor. Over the years, he has done several cruel things, including amputating Elsa Mars' legs from her knees because he wanted to make a snuff film. During World War II, Gruber was running his own concentration camp, performing several unspeakable experiments on people just because he could. When Germany lost the World War, Gruber fled to America and took on the name Arthur Arden. With this pseudonym, he joined the Briar Cliff as an attending physician for the tuberculosis ward. When it became the asylum for the criminally insane, Arthur Arden stayed. He regularly conducted horrendous experiments on the patients without giving them anesthesia, saying it hampered his readings. As Arthur's lab was sealed off from everyone else, he had the privacy to pursue his experiments in peace. Spalding. Spalding is the mute butler in Miss Robichaud's academy, who is often seen helping Fiona Good cover up her not-so-good action. But how did he end up here? Spalding was the son of a doll maker who killed his wife and her lover when he found them together. Not wanting his son Spalding to grow up this way, he created a dollhouse where he kidnapped women and made them do a certain action. One such woman was Kobe. She had supernatural powers and she amused Spalding. Spalding genuinely liked her and wanted to be with her forever, and Kobe too felt sympathetic towards this sheltered child. When Spalding's father Samuel killed off all the kidnapped women, a coven of witches showed up to save Kobe. Kobe forgave Spalding's behavior and took Spalding with her. From then on, Spalding ended up in the academy. He fell in love with Fiona and decided to help cover her misdeeds, even if he had to cut off his tongue for it. <laughs> Dandy Mott Gloria Mott had one son whom she spoiled rotten. That son was Dandy. Despite all her efforts, Dandy took after his father and showed signs of being mentally disturbed. He had the personality of a child, and he imagined that the whole world revolved around him. Whenever his needs were not met, he would throw tantrums and get angry like a child. He met the freaks of the freak show and felt a connection with them. He even decided to become Twisty the Clown's protege at one point. When he met Bet and Dot, he was sure he would be able to emotionally manipulate them and get close to them, which sadly did not work out in his favor. In the end, he's killed by Bet, Dot, and Desiree for killing off the rest of the freaks. Marie LaVue Marie LaVue is the queen of voodoo in New Orleans, and Angela Bassett brought her to life with every scene. 
She's powerful, she's strong, and she's smart. But she's made mistakes too. She ended up being immortal at the cost of her baby with her lover, Bastion, who died thanks to Pauline Lalori accusing him of rape. This leads Marie to swear revenge against the Lalori family, and she does so by giving Delphine Lalori a vial full of her tears, cursing Lalori with immortality like her son, and then killing off her husband and children as an act of revenge. Marie is brutal, but she's a strong character and no wonder she is a fan favorite. Theta. Theta is a result of a project that was made to create a perfect human-alien hybrid. The goal of perfection was so set in her head that she was willing to go as far as to kill the imperfect hybrid babies and anyone who stood in her way of perfection. Theta does not hesitate to kill the parents if she thinks they are imperfect. She's comfortable killing the parent who births a perfect child and keeping their beheaded body to act as an incubator for the new babies. Overall, Theta is a misanthropic scientist, and no matter how much she says that she's doing this to save humanity, it is clear that she does not care about anything except her perfect hybrid army. Are you ready for me? Gathic. In Asylum, we get to see an entity who only comes when she's called upon. That is Gathic. She's a benevolent entity and she gives her kiss of death to people who are dying or wish to die, as she brings death with her wherever she goes. She's dressed like a woman in mourning, even though we never truly see her express these emotions that much. She's one of the no-judgmental characters in the whole series because she says that she does not judge the people who call upon her. As a grim reaper, Skathic is quite the comfort want to go to the door of death with. Rabbit Ruth In the episode Drive In, we find Rabbit Ruth. The movie Rabbit Rabbit, made by Bitterman, had spliced in frames to affect the brain's fear center. The moment the movie starts, everything becomes chaotic because it triggers a transformation in the viewer, making them go rabid and attack everyone around them. Ruth was one of the victims of such attacks. When the movie was first screened, her boyfriend had ripped out her eye and swallowed it. To prevent this from happening again, Ruth showed up at the drive-in theater Theater, hoping to stop the screening. She goes as far as the projector room, hoping to stop the projector there, but she gets stabbed in her remaining eye and is later found to be disemboweled by Chad and Kelly, who are the main protagonists of this episode. Marvelous Verdict With that, we have covered pretty much all the characters we could have thought of, with the stellar performance from the star-studded cast and gripping storyline. American Horror Story truly made us understand the plights of each of these characters, even if they were evil. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone and see you soon.